Hey everyone, Brett Mix here. Welcome to another WrestleMania review. Today we do one of the best WrestleManias from the early ones and one of my favorite all time, uh, WrestleMania 7. I, I just liked this event as a kid because there was just tons of different kind of matches and we'll get to that. This took place from LA, California. And before I start to read the facts and the review, I'd just like to say my name is Brett Mix, and I'm with Macho Wrestling 101. Please hit like and subscribe. It would help me a great deal, as this is a brand new channel, and I'd really appreciate it. All right, now let's get back to the event. Uh, WrestleMania 7 took place on Sunday, March 24th, 1991, in front of the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Center. They moved from the would-be dome, they said because of bomb threats, but the reality was the ticket sales were low. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter was an Iraqi sympathizer, and he was going after the Hogan, who Hogan and Slaughter actually had the belt. So there was a lot of threats, McMahon and company said. And that's what the main event was built around, too, so I think that's uh, notable. Donald Trump s sitting in the front row for the third time. The other two times were, of course, when he hosted WrestleMania at 4 and 5 from Trump Plaza in Atlantic City. Um... Here we go. This is the first one without Jesse Ventura. The first seven pay-per-views. Coco Beware opened last WrestleMania, and he opens the dark match, beating the Brooklyn Brawler before the pay-per-view starts to get going. Now it does get going, and we have a great match between the Rockers and the Twin Towers here. Um, the Barbarian and Haku. Not the Twin Towers, but they pretty much were, if you think about it. Uh, the, this is where uh, Bobby Heenan... He starts out for the night with his first ma match against the High Flying Rockers. The Rockers opened up WrestleMania 5, and now they're opening up WrestleMania 7. And this one was a great match. A lot of back and forth. Uh, big men going against quick men. The hot tags, the frequent tags, the double teaming, the isolation of the ring, cutting off the ring in half. A lot of that kind of stuff going on. The place popped when the Rockers defeated the Barbarian and Haku at 10.41 after Michaels got the count on Haku. Sean came from the corner for the crossbody and got the three. It told him that good story. It was, it was hot. The crowd was hot. They were ready for it. It set the tone for the rest of the night. Three stars for that opener. Now we're on to Texas Tornado. Kerry Von Erich versus Dino Bravo, who had Jimmy Hart in his corner. The late Von Erich in the Hall of Fame with the Von Erich family. Uh, Dino, of course, was murdered uh, in Canada over smuggling cigarettes or, or something to that degree. Um, anyways, the single match didn't go very long. It only ended at 3.11 after Von Erich hit his signature claw and his signature moves uh, out of the headlock. And then a tornado blast to the head. This was filler, but got the job done. Half a star for that. Next, we have the British Bulldog vs. the War War with the Doctor of Style Slick in his corner. This match, it, it doesn't read on paper. It must see. British Bulldog War, Warlord. It might feel like it's a good on paper name, but the match would be shit. It actually is the other way around. You actually think Bulldog Warlord, okay, that's going to be slow and boring. But it actually was fast-paced, and it was a great big man match. This was a gem here. The Warlord and the Bulldog really put on a good match. I give it two stars and three quarters. Davy Boy Smith hit his power slam at 8.15 for the win. But yeah, the action was great. The work rate was pretty good. Both guys were spent at the end of those eight minutes. Number four, we had Nasty Boys challenging the Heart Foundation for their championships. Uh... The Hart Foundation were the number one contenders at last WrestleMania. They went on to win the belts, and they've held the belts till this event. Brett was proud of this event, I think probably because it's selling, because the, all I see from this match, this event, this match, all I see from this match is the, the double teamwork by the Nasty Boys to Brett. So it was kind of uh, curious, curious that he picked this match for his first DVD. Um, when he did come back to Brawl, he, he made it look real, and he was... He delivered heavy blows to Segs and uh, Nasty Boys there. Uh, knobs and Segs. In the end, though, the Nasty Boys won due to, with cheating from the megaphone from the mouth of the South. And they, they pinned the Heart Foundation at 1210. This was pretty good. Three stars, I rated it. Jake the Snake took on the model Rick Martel next in a blindfold match. This was uh, had good build. 
and it had good intrigue. And as a kid, you love it. You but you you suspend your disbelief as an adult. They did, you know, Jake Roberts pointing, and the fans get louder each time he points to somebody. That that, that was just great stuff. I rated it two stars and a quarter. I it, it worked for its time. Jake won, uh, obviously, and then Damien came out at the end, and everyone went happy. Jake Roberts won with the DDT at 834. And like I say, I give it two stars and a quarter. Next, The Undertaker made his WrestleMania debut, and he went 1-0 and as he took on Superfly Piece of Shit Snuka. In the end, Undertaker went 1-0, and as I said, and he hit him with the Tombstone pile driver. I give it a star because it starts the streak. Career-threatening match next, the Macho King versus the Warrior. Macho King had Sherry in his corner. And I love that little thing Savage does like this. To, to point to Sherry for, to open the ropes for him. He goes, <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Everything he did was awesome. His fucking attire was awesome. The blue and white. Yeah, and then the Warrior comes out and he doesn't run. Warrior's fucking awesome. And he doesn't run. He walks because this is serious shit. But... It's it couldn't be more perplexing because yeah he walks but this is the most action packed match he's ever had. Macho Man that's saying something for him too because it's one of the most action packed his career too. It's probably the most action packed match in either career in either of the one of them's career. I give the match five stars. I know I'm a Savage fan, but. When you count the Elizabeth storyline, which is the, one of the most emotional moments in wrestling history, and when you consider that Macho Man gave him what three or five, three, four or five elbow drops, the fifth, the fifth one, I believe, and Warrior still pointed to the heavens and put a boot on Macho to it win, and so we retired the Macho King, but the Macho Man would come back later. Just a great match. The crowd went nuts for every single move in this match. Anything that happened, the crowd went crazy. I think I think they they couldn't have tried to make it more perfect than this. This was five stars, in my opinion. Only one of thirteen matches I've ever put five stars from the WWE, and uh, that was one of them. In the end, the Ultimate Warrior. I guess I should get to that. The Warrior. There's so much stuff that happened at the end with Liz. So, the Warrior beat the Savage after a boot to the chest. And then a power slam at 2048. That's one of the quickest 20 minutes in wrestling history. Next, the new demolition, Crush and Smash, who have Fuji in their corner. Fuji is not in the corner. He's in the corner. He's not in the corner. Three consecutive manias where he's back and forth versus Tenryu and Kiato. I don't know how they didn't do demolition versus the Legion of Doom, but whatever. Um. Yeah, this match wasn't very good. It was just a star. I rated it just a star, and I'm going to keep to that because I don't remember anything when I rewatched it. Of substance, anyway. It was filler. But this match was good when I rewatched it. The big boss man had Andre in his corner versus Mr. Perfect, who had Heaton in his corner. Um, underrated tilt here. I, I liked how Mr. Perfect bumped for Ray Trailer. May all the people rest in peace. Andre, Heaton, Trailer, and Headache. All of them are dead. I believe Joey Morello was even refereeing this match. So, And then the commentators, they're all dead too. So it, everybody involved in this whole match is dead. It's just depressing. Uh, but then this match was awesome. Like I say, Perfect bumped around for the boss man. In the end, the boss man defeated Perfect by disqualification at 10.47 after the big boss man um, had help from Andre outside of the ring. It was a gem while it lasted. It could have been, went on to do great things with a better finish, but I rated two stars and three quarters. Earthquake uh, defeated J Greg the Hammer Valentine uh, after the figure four is countered, and then a splash. Three quarters of a star. The Legion of Doom took on power and glory, Paul Roma and Hercules, and the LOD hit their famous Doomsday device, Paul Roma, in just 58 seconds, quarter of a star. So again, why the hell did Legion of Doom face demolition if that's all you're doing with them? Next, we had Virgil finally getting his moment with the Million Dollar Man, and Virgil goes over. Uh, Virgil gets a payoff victory, but by Cattle at 741. DiBiase did a great job getting him over, too. Two stars and a quarter. 
Next, we had the filler match before the main event, the Mountie versus Tito Santana. The Mountie shocked him with uh, Tito Santana with the cattle prod, and at 121, got the victory. The ref was distracted, obviously. I give that a half a star. Next, we have the main event between Hulk Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter. They capitalized on the Gulf War, of course, in 1991. Hogan's the real Americans, and Slaughter is the Iraqi sympathizer. They had Regis Philbin on commentary. Uh, obviously, this is one of the best matches that you that you think would be good. Just like Bulldog and Warlord, these two guys really went out there and did a good thing. Like this match had everybody involved, even during what a Slaughter's camel clutch to wear down Hogan. I really enjoyed the shit out of watching this match. It ended at 2026 20, after a long, hard, bloody battle. Hogan won with a leg drop. New WWF champion Regis yells, what a fight. Three stars and a quarter for that. Final review, final rating for this WrestleMania, 7.5 out of 10. That's right on par with WrestleMania 3, making this the second best WrestleMania in the first seven. And one of the funnest to rewatch and review. I had a blast, and I hope you continue watching them. I'm Brett Mix. This is the WrestleMania Reviews, and we'll see you for WrestleMania 8. Like and subscribe if you haven't. Please do that. It helps the channel out. And we'll keep pumping out videos every day. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Brett Mix, Macho Wrestling 101, and I'm out.